says I have 13 hours and 13 minutes left on my GoPro, which feels very um, unlucky. <laughs> Hi, I love Euro Trash. How about you? Today, we're here to talk about Juan Piquer Simone's Cthulhu Mansion and Olaf Ittenbach's Burning Moon. While I do my makeup like Donatella Versace. <laughs> Kitty, you sure scared the shit out of me. Where did you come from? Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. So I have already primed, foundationed, and uh, glued my eyebrows down with lip balm because they are uh, especially Edward G. Robinson-y today for whatever reason. So I'm going to go in with Glossier Stretch Concealer, if that's right. Same bat time, same bat channel, everybody. Cthulhu Mansion. Um, contrary to the name, this movie is not particularly Lovecraftian. Um, I will say, though, it is about as Lovecraftian as, say, like, Reanimator or something. Like, there are some vague, <laughs> vague Lovecraft um, references in there, I guess. Um, essentially, the plot of Cthulhu Mansion, um, also known as Black Magic Mansion. Um, it's like... It's like a home invasion movie, and a possession movie, and a ghost story, and a zombie movie, and like a crime movie. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot of, a lot of movies. All packed into one. These bad teens kidnap a magician and force him to take them to his mansion where they can hide out and try to take care of their friend who has been shot by a um, security guard at a carnival who has a gun. I don't, I don't know if that's just, that's how they do it in Spain. Sort of like supernatural slasher style hijinks ensue. Um, and everybody dies. And Frank Finlay becomes Satan or something. Um, this movie is directed by Juan Piquer Simone, who you probably know as the director of the iconic um, slasher flick pieces um, and who I know as the director of um, one of my favorite movies ever, Pod People, which is a um, E.T. ripoff with a lot of like weird bad animation in it. The film starts off, off with this like, like spooky sounds tape style um, sound collage, which is pretty neat. Um, and then the very first shot is of, uh, Frank Finlay's character, um, Chandu in this sort of, like, he's wearing, like, a Shirley Mac McLean turban. <laughs> like, it's this very, it's this very white turban and then, like, very white gloves. Um, and he is a stage magician but also like 
a real magician apparently because he unleashes the forces of darkness on his poor family and all of the other all of the juvenile delinquents who come into his orbit so um yeah and right off the bat we've got a drug deal gone wrong in a haunted house um like a security guard murdered um abduction i like the gang in this movie a lot there's hawk who's the like boss guy and he's really like tough and like emotionally abusive um there's his girlfriend ava who's played by melanie shatner william shatner's daughter um who has this kind of like it's like a mary quant also if you hear my little dog is like eating in the <laughs> this is just not my day um Oh my god, he's mad going to town. He's so happy right now. There's this scene in this movie where um, a cat just stares at a, like, a cat stares impassively at a woman being eaten by a monster in a fridge. And I feel like that's exactly what Walter the, Ch the Chihuahua would do if he ever saw me being eaten by like a piece of household furniture. Like if an appliance like leashed out and like mowed down on me, he would just not. <laughs> he would not do anything. Um, anyway, yeah. So there is um, Hawk, the leader, Ava, played by Melanie Shatner, who sports this like five point sort of like, like the haircut that Vidal Sassoon did for Mary Quant in the 60s, the sort of like iconic like mod chick bob, but a like so, like hardcore like soccer momified version. It's very odd. It's a very odd haircut for a juvenile delinquent to have, in my opinion. Um, and then there is uh, Candy. Um, of course, the fat girl is named Candy and always thinking and talking about food. She's a pretty convincing juvenile delinquent. She's probably my favorite character. Um, and then her boyfriend, Billy, who's just this sort of like doofy rapist. Um, and then Ava's little brother who like wants to join the gang, but is has not yet been invited. I think like he's like not officially part of the gang. Um, all of the uh, delinquents have like matching pristine leather motorcycle jackets and I'm really into it. Like I wish I had good enough of friends to like wear matching clothes because they are they look great. The casting for this movie is pretty interesting. Um, most notably uh, Frank Finlay who plays Shendu. He were he's like he was a Shakespearean actor who even worked with like Laurence Olivier and shit. Frank Finlay was made a, a commander of the Order of the British Empire in 84 and like did had so many notable points to his career even like he started out in like a bit part in like an Alan Silito adaptation like he's super like seems like a very notable actor so I'm not really sure exactly what he was doing in this movie if it was sort of like a low point in his career or he was hurting for money or what was going on with that one. But lucky for us, um, <laughs> his pain is our pleasure. The uh, man that plays his like mute minion, Felix, he was in a bunch of like genre movies. Like you look at his IMDb credit and it's like an insane amount of films. Like I think this dude was literally in over like a hundred films and most of them are just sort of like spaghetti Western shit. Like. Really cool. Somebody who loves like old dark house type of movies and just like anything haunted house basically. Um, I wasn't that into the actual mansion in this one, um, which is funny because the characters keep talking about how creepy it is, but then it sort of to me just looks like a generic upper middle class home. Um, the slasher element is pretty cool. Um, there are a couple most of the deaths in this movie are pretty tame but there's one in which um spoilers i guess billy gets like 
drowned in a shower in like the shower starts spewing blood and then it just like fills up and you see him drown and then it like drains away and he's just gone like yeah it's a little bit gruesome yeah it's weird it turns from like home invasion movie to supernatural slasher and it also has this very sort of like Disneyland like haunted mansion style sort of like energy to it like there are a lot of just like flying objects like I mean just like in this way that's very random and like cartoony almost just like flying like bread slices and then like flying like chairs and shit like that and it does remind me again of uh Juan Piquer Simone's movie pod people where that's like really in effect um it's very it's very goofy this is definitely like a movie that you could watch with a child <laughs> like or somebody with the mind of a child i guess so donatella um <laughs> to me the uh euro trash icon the queen of euro trash um i am gonna go ahead and say that it is Donatella Versace, um, who never ceases to amaze me in every interview I watch with her. She's just like so fun. I don't know. I love Donatella. Um, so I am here. I am here to try to imitate Donatella's makeup, which is going to be hard for me because it looks like it's mostly just like a smoky eye and a nude lip. Um, and then like a contour. I never contour to the point of like not even owning a like contour or powder brush. Um, my normal look day to day is like a minimal eye and a very bold lip. So this is gonna be a little weird for me. I'm gonna kind of like jerry rig a contour together with Tanacon. And with a tiny bit and hopefully I don't look like a scary clown. Let's see how this goes. Oh no. Mm. What do you think? Is that weird? <laughs> Cthulhu Mansion is one of those movies, it's like when you read reviews of it, a lot of people complain about the inconsistencies. I mean, it's like a, you know, cheaply made, like, horror, monster, zombie, ghost, possession, home invasion movie. <laughs> like, but the biggest inconsistency for me was, so the woman that plays Shandu's deceased wife in flashback sequences is the same woman that plays his daughter, Lisa, who is his assistant in the present. And it's one of those situations where they'll want to hire like a model to play the female lead in a movie, but then the dude will just be like a regular guy. So it's like, Lisa is like a foot taller than Shandu. And in turn, Leonora, the wife, is like a foot taller than her husband. And then, you know, of course, the sort of like meet cute, happy ending where um, the junior member of the gang and Lisa are the only ones to survive and they sort of like go off together with the implication being that they will date, um, you know, it's like she's a model, so she's in turn like <laughs> a foot taller than this weird like young guy in a denim leisure suit and it's like wow truly the cycle of trauma continues i am contoured about as much as i dare to be contoured so um hopefully i yeah you know like put, i don't know something about like like facial makeup makes me feel like i'm like a small child at halloween like rubbing fake dirt on myself to try to look like a hobo <laughs> Like, so, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Viva Donatella, the things I do for you, babe. Um, yeah, so, 
Ah, uh, Cthulhu Mansion. Honestly, maybe even like more so than the fact that Lisa is a foot taller than everybody else in the movie. Also, Hawk does this really cringy gun acting that I always hate when I see You see it in like, it appears a lot in like Ed Wood movies, like how the cops in Ed Wood movies will like use their gun to like scratch their head or like convey confusion. Like, yeah, basically like pointing the gun at their own head. Oh my God, I know it's like supposed to be funny, but it's like, horrifying and let hawk does it like three times in this movie and every single time it's just like like we're gonna talk about olaf ittenbach in a minute but like yo hawk like pointing a gun to scratch his own head like made me cringe so much harder than anything in burning moon it's like man just one one event to startle him and like pull the oh god gross oh fuck anyway um oh and there's this other weird moment where candy is like you know she's a fat girl so she's obviously always looking for food right um but like there's a point at which she like finds a tuna sandwich just like randomly in the kitchen and screams I love tuna and then takes a huge bite out of it and then like gooses Lisa <laughs> like what I it's I don't know like there are just so many like fun bizarro little moments in this movie that just make it I feel like a really a really sterling example of its genre the ghost zombie possession home invasion Lovecraftian <laughs> crime movie. The movie seems like it is meant to be a serious movie and like for the most part it kind of comes off like one but there are all these weird little touches like cartoony very like Juan Piquer Simone style touches like it um every time somebody gets gets killed you know at the point in the movie where it turns into a supernatural slasher um he like chooses to the musical cue is this like Iana Zanakis style like wacky avant-garde horns it's like very jarring um so I don't really know what the purpose was in that like it feels very wacky and then yeah a lot of the like animation style just like stuff flying all over like feels very like Disney Haunted Mansion like wacky spooky type stuff. The kills are pretty cool. Um, Candy, the fat girl, gets eaten by a fridge, obviously. Um, Billy drowns in blood in the shower. Um, Ava gets ate by a plant. Like it like sort of, yeah, it like comes in through a window and like absorbs her and then like sneaks back out again. Um, and then Hawk just gets stabbed, I think. And then Shandu, um, like, becomes Cthulhu or something. I There's a lot of, like, he's definitely, like, got some prosthetics on and then, like, sinks into the ground. I don't know if that's supposed to be Cthulhu or he's, like, <laughs> what, what quite is the deal with that? Um, yeah, it's overall just, like, a really fun movie. Um, I do think one could pair some own, like, is a very or was is is like was a very talented director and like the cast in this movie actually is like all things considered pretty good um i would say if you are in a position where you have to look after a child for a couple hours um or just really hung over want to hear simone was like a very proud genre director i was reading an interview with him and he to paraphrase basically is like you know, there's this mentality in Spain where it's like every movie needs to be a serious movie. I think he said something about like guys in berets, like, you know, Spanish movies are like guys in berets. And he's like very deliberately and honestly, he's a genre director in a very like deliberate and honest manner. Um, and that just feels really refreshing, like even today. Let's start with this <laughs> smoky eye. Um, Uh, yeah, I like a lot of Jeffree Star. I own a lot of Jeffree Star stuff. Um, I know he's a little controversial. Um, personally, it's like, I don't know.
don't know, man. I don't care if the guy sleeps with a cardboard cutout of Adolf Hitler every night. Like, if it's good, like, decently priced makeup, like, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, it's all made by fucking Chinese white slaves anyway, kids. There's no, <laughs> there's no ethical way to be a makeup enthusiast. I'm sorry. Going in with burial gown. A cremate is, is definitely my favorite makeup release of 2020. Right, and for the lid, ooh. Okay, and for the lid, I am going to go in with Angel of Death. Angel de Muerte. I don't think that's right. I'm sorry, Wombi Care. My housemate is having a Juan Piquer Simone flying furniture moment <laughs> over there in the next room. I don't know. Again, a bold eye is not normally my thing, but I'm willing to try to emulate my hero, Donatella. Honestly, Donatella reminds me like I was recently rewatching some interviews with her, and she kind of reminds me of like a more serious version of Edie Monsoon from Absolutely Fabulous. Like she's like got that very like, I like rich lady, like girl power energy. Cthulhu Mansion, fun, pleasant, lighthearted movie. Um, now we're gonna talk about Burning Moon. Du kleines Dreckstück. Du hast nichts verstanden. Weiß deine Mutter, was tief in dir steckt? Weiß sie, wie falsch du tief in ihr drin bist? Wie falsch dein Inneres ist? Ich werde es dir zeigen. Sie wird schwer enttäuscht sein, so ein ungezogenes Mädchen. So eine verdorbene Seele. Du machst meine Träume kaputt, du taktloser Bauerntrampel. Du hast einfach kein Gefühl für Romantik. Schluck es! <lacht> So Burning Moon is like, I guess it would technically be an omnibus horror movie. It's got like a wraparound segment um, and then two sort of like stories within that. Basically, um, the framing story of Burning Moon is this juvenile delinquent, Peter, uh, played by the director, Olaf Ittenbach, after he gets into a terrible fight and comes home clearly on heroin, um, his parents task him with caring for his younger sister for some reason. I don't know. Um, Olaf Ittenbach is so convincing at playing a juvenile delinquent. It's like uncanny how good he is at Peter. Um, there's even this segment where Peter interviews for a job and it's just like transcendental <laughs> in how utterly bizarre it is. Um, but anyway, so Peter is tasked with um, taking care of his younger sister and he decides to read her some bedtime stories. Um, and the bedtime stories are obviously the uh, little narratives that we get in the movie. The first story is about a woman who goes on a date with a serial killer, basically. He's like an escaped mental patient and he 
kills her whole family. <laughs> uh, and then the second segment is about a corrupt priest in 1950s Germany who is secretly a satanic rapist um, and the sort of like chaos that ensues when he goes on a killing spree and then they think that the wrong guy did it. Um, Olaf Ittenbach is super interesting. He uh, is still working up to this day. This was his second um, feature film that he did. Um, it looks like a lot of his newer stuff is like, I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but sort of like new metal horror a la like Rob Zombie or something. Um, just like, you know, slick, wildly gory movies. Um, probably like not really, like Burning Moon is definitely more my speed. Um, but yeah, like his, I'm, it's really cool to see that he's like still working and like a lot of his projects, like he's done a lot of interesting work. He even did at one point a, um, like a reimagining of the, uh, infamous Roswell alien autopsy video. Um, cause he is also like a special effects master. Like he's a, he's got it all like writer, director, producer, um, special effects master, actor. Um, yeah, he filmed Burning Moon at a very young age. He was about 23 when he made it, which is like, I love it when immensely talented people <laughs> use their powers for evil. Um, Olaf Ittenbach could have done anything else with his talents, but he decided to make Burning Moon and just like, thank God he did. Cause this is like an amazing movie. Um, it's wildly gory, like, fucking disgusting, stomach churning gore, but it's like, it's different from a lot of other splatter flicks is that there, it's not like, I feel like a lot of splatter movies are just sort of like very dour or like downbeat. It's like Burning Moon is just like ecstatic, um, frenetically joyful sequences of gore. Like Ittenbach loves gore. He's not sorry. You love gore. You're not sorry, which is why you're watching Burning Moon. It is literally like transcendental, <laughs> and, like disgusting. Yeah, like a transcendentally disgusting splatter film. Just like, yeah, frenetically fucking gross. It's just like, just when you think it can't get any grosser. Um, like the gore sequences in this movie are amazing. I kind of like don't even want to like describe them in detail because like there's so much fun to just like, you know, discover. Like it's, yeah, it's so much fun to see Burning Moon for the first time. But yeah, like eyeballs being shoved down throats where your POV is like in the esophagus. Um, like men being, having their feet hooked up with chains and then like split in two. Um, so many heads exploding just from being shot. Like, I don't know if this is like, you know, I don't know a lot about guns. Maybe the like old school World War II, like Luger pistols did make people's heads explode when you shot them in the head with like, I don't know, like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if this is a documentary or not. I am a gore fucking freak. Like, I don't know, man. When I was like a little kid, like tricking older boys into renting faces of death for me, <laughs> like that level, it's like bad. I guess Ittenbach was a dental technician before he was a filmmaker, which is pretty terrifying. Um, there's some teeth stuff in this movie too. Just, I, that's a lot of people, can, that's what they can't take. I think is like the eyes and the teeth and there's like a pretty solid amount of like eye and teeth gore in this movie. So like trigger warning, I guess. Um, yeah, this is a uh, shot on video and it definitely shows um, the YouTube version is definitely pretty grainy. Um, I would suggest getting your hands on a copy of the DVD if you can. Um, it's got this like 
very, um, it's got like a Yord Budkerite style. They're like very different, like um, Necromantic and Burning Moon have extremely different energy. That's like very different movies, but it's got sort of the same like vibe, just sort of like nasty, greasy, like early 90s, lower middle class, just like sad people stuck in like gross, shitty jobs that they don't care about. As far as I can figure out, this film is still banned in Germany. Um, like, I read about it being banned, but I couldn't find anything about it being unbanned. So I'm gonna assume it's just like still banned. And um, I guess upon its release, the German authorities searched it in Buck's house and then fined him the equivalent of 3,000 US dollars, which is like crazy. Like, this wasn't, um, Burning Moon wasn't one of the video nasties, but it's got very like, video nasty energy. So the Yulia's love sequence where like a chick goes on a date with a serial killer. Um, I don't think Yulia's love, from what I can figure out, I don't think it's the fan favorite, but I actually think I kind of like this sequence a little bit more. Um, like it feels a little bit more like human, I guess. Um, and like, yeah, so Yulia reminds me of Lindsay Lohan. And I think that the, actor that plays the serial killer in the sequence um, looks kind of like David Byrne. So, <laughs> so if you can imagine like early 90s German David Byrne and Lindsay Lohan on a date and then David Byrne tries to like murder her after, like it's that basically. Um, it's interesting too, there are a lot of like there are definitely some sequences in this movie that I really I'm confused by and I almost wonder if it's like a cultural thing where like as an American in 2020 I'm just like so removed from early 90s Germany that like you know quotidian very like normal things to them like seem very odd to me like honestly out of all of the weird things that happen in this movie the strangest one or the one that's sort of like I bumped on the most. Um, it wasn't the gore sequences or like the rape sequences or anything like that. It was the fact that like people are always like walking into each other in the bathroom or like walking in on each other in the bathroom. And that seems like nobody seems to clock that or like think it's weird. Like at the beginning of the movie, Peter just like walks into the bathroom when his mom is like running a bath or something. And I was like, oh, this is just maybe like a sloppy moment. Like this was just like poorly edited or something or like not really planned out. But then Yulia walks in on her sister when her sister is like fresh out of the bath. And I'm like, is this just like normal for Germans? Like they just like walk, they just like, you know, your sister is in the bathroom, like maybe in the shower and you just like go in there. I don't like, I understand that Europeans are like more chill with casual nudity, but like your own family, like in your house, like, I don't know, <laughs> whatever. I know that's like a weird thing to like bump on out of all of the heinous shit that happens in this movie, but that was the thing that was like, whoa, <laughs> like walking in on your mom when she's running a bath, like what the fuck, you freak. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like fun trivia about this movie. Like I guess Ittenbach like did all his own stunts and like hit his balls a bunch of times. <laughs> That was the thing that stuck out to me on the IMDb page. Let's go in with death certificate. Gnarly. Death certificate here. Oh yeah. Um, and then the second sequence, or the second story, I guess I should say. The purity about this like satanic priest who um, murders people, I guess, to purify them. Um, CBH, I wasn't really that clear. I've never really been that clear on like the plot of the second story in this movie. Um, but yeah, and that's got and that culminates in this really crazy sequence of like, it's like the main antagonist 
um, dies and goes to hell. So it's his experience in hell, and that's the sequence where he, like, gets ripped in half, like, starting at the groin, basically. Um, and that's, like, really, really hard to watch. Um, but at the same time, again, it's this sort of, like, you know, maniacal sort of, like, ecstasy of gore. It's literally just, like, transcendental gore. Um, and there are, in, I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but, like, Burning Moon is, like, an ugly movie. It's, it's shot on video, like, it's super, like, low budget, like, it's just it's sort of like an ugly movie. But there are sequences, um, or there are shots in, uh, the end of the purity where they're in hell, where it re literally reminds me of, like, like, it reminds me of, like, Raft of the Medusa or something. Like, just bodies, like, artfully kind of, like, stacked on top of each other in this very sort of, like, almost kind of, like, romantic way. Like, it's, like, actually, which is weird, yeah, because it's definitely the most brutal part of the movie, but, um, it is, like, you know, it does have, like, very beautiful parts. But, yeah, a lot of, like, like, also, yeah, also in hell they have, like, guns and they're just shooting each other and blowing up each other's heads. There's a lot of weird, like, eyeball stuff. Yeah, like, the hell sequence goes on for a really long time. To the point where it almost feels, it feels like a third story. Like, it's technically part of the purity, but it feels like it's its own sort of, like, independent, you know, discreet entity from the purity. Let's do a casket ready and top it off with diamond ashes. Really really going all out in our Donatella cover today. Maybe we'll layer a little bit of diamond ashes over it. I've been using diamond ashes. Um, I'm not a huge like highlight person, but sometimes I'll do like a really sort of like low key one and diamond ashes really works as a highlighter too, so. I feel like I always end up with like a really like puissant Inner, like it's like my inner corner is just like always too much. Okay, so Donatella um, always seems to part her hair in the middle, um, which is like physically painful for me. Um, I <laughs> I am not an Italian fashion icon. I am a chubby cheek upper midwesterner and when I part my hair in the middle I look like fucking Dwight Schrute um so we're gonna see how this goes um the boar bristle brush for people who just straight up do not wash their fucking hair mm. somehow I've gotten glitter in my hair dude makeup gets everywhere like I like only fairly recently started wearing makeup and honestly the biggest sort of like surprise about getting into makeup is like makeup gets like everywhere <laughs> like I find makeup in my hair constantly and it's like how you can use setting spray as diligently as a person is physically able to and you will still find makeup on your fucking sneakers at the end of the day Okay, I mean, it's more like baby Mozart than like Dwight Schrute today, um, so I will, I'll take it. <laughs> um, to cro <laughs> to cross over classical and conspiracy worlds and also like talk about something that has nothing to do with this video, there's this fun like conspiracy about how um, the marriage of Figaro is just like a metaphor for um, like the masons it's very odd like there are a lot of like very odd conspiracy theories surrounding mozart um that's probably my favorite it's all just like this masonic imagery i mean honestly like the marriage of figaro doesn't make any sense so but i mean what does what does in this crazy world okay um 
And then uh, I saw an interview with Donatella where she said she wears four, where she wears four different kinds of perfume, um, like layered. Man, I am a perfume novice. That's not me. So I'm just gonna spritz a little bit of my flavor of the week here. Uh, Maison Margiela's Jazz Club. Okay, last thing. Um, so Donatella and other like Euro trash ladies, as far as I can see, they just do like a nude lip. Again, <laughs> not my style. I do not own a nude lipstick. Like, I like I am so far removed from that like universe where anybody I even know would use a nude lipstick. Um, so I'm going to like jerry rig one with eyeshadow. So well, and I've never tried this before. So let's see how this goes. Um, going in with uh, conspiracy, my pills. I'm just gonna like. I already primed my lips, which maybe you will help me won't. Huh. Oh. Uh. <laughs> okay. Um, that's a little uh, corpsey. Interesting. And then I've got. Um. So this is like. This weird brand that I've only seen at Northeastern Wisconsin, Kohl's. Um, I think it's called Leak, but also it's got a big Q on it. So I don't know if there's some like connection there or like what's up with that. Um, maybe <laughs> it's Q brand lipstick. I don't know. But I'm gonna get this a little sheen to make it look less insane or more insane. Let's see how this goes. So I don't, I don't really think I look like Donatella. Um, honestly, I do think I look a little bit like Ivana Trump, um, who I guess is technically also a Euro trash icon. So like success, maybe, kind of. Probably not going to be my go-to day-to-day look, but I feel okay about it. Just genuinely a very, like, mean-spirited movie. Um, and I say this in the most respectful way possible um, as a, frankly, sort of mean-spirited person. Um, I can dig it. Um, honestly, the most disturbing sequence, in all seriousness, the most disturbing sequences in Burning Moon for me are not the ones that are sort of like the pyrotechnic Baroque gore. Um, there are also sequences where it's just legit like a dude quietly getting beaten to death with a hammer. Um, <laughs> yeah, which I think is a lot, ultimately a lot more disturbing. These sort of like scenes of quiet, very mundane brutality, you know, mixed in with the over the top, um, like splatter sequences are I think what makes this movie like really deeply disturbing. Um, even to this day, like it's an enduringly... <laughs> An enduringly frightening movie. So thank you, Olaf Ittenbach. And there's like, okay, so my favorite shot of Burning Moon is like blood gets spattered on a like leather studded cod piece. Like there's this weird like BDSM element. Like this movie just has so much. It's really just like throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks, only the spaghetti is like brain matter. Yeah, which is funny because uh, Cthulhu Mansion and Burning Moon, um, you know, on the surface there are movies that have very little in common and like beneath the surface there are movies that have very little in common um, in spite of both being like Euro trash. Um, but honestly they do have this, they do share this sort of like, it's like kitchen sink horror. It's like every kind of like theme or trope or imagery you could really like imagine and just all sort of like thrown together. Like they both have this sort of like jumbled uh, episodic quality. And I don't even say that because Burning Moon like is an episodic movie, like in like separate from that, it feels very like episodic. And like, 
I feel like the mixing of genres in this way, like, it does feel a little, like, manic, but at the end of the day, I really, like, I think it works. Like, I think thematically and, like, narratively, both of these movies work really well um, in spite of the fact, or, like, because of the fact that there are just so many different genres kind of, like, you know, flung, flung into the mix. And it's sort of, like, this is the, you know, this is one of the reasons why, like, you can call it avant-garde cinema, you can call it, like, trash cinema, like, whatever, like, low-budget cinema. This is one of the reasons why low-budget cinema is so cool, because the filmmakers are working outside of the rules and they don't really feel like they have to, like, make a movie in a specific genre. Like, they can make a movie that's, like, a home invasion movie and a Lovecraft movie. Like, they can make a movie that's, like, a splatter flick and family drama with, with like Peter and his family. Like there are extended sequences with like Peter and his family drama. You know, genres that you wouldn't necessarily think to like throw together intuitively, but like both of these movies really work. Like as different as these movies are, both of them like have a highly European sensibility and are like very, very watchable. Um, I would highly recommend either or both of these movies or just play them at the same time, you know? Get a TV over here playing um, Cthulhu Mansion and like get another TV. Play them both simultaneously alongside each other and let me know how it goes. Cause I feel like these movies would ro work really well literally together. Not just on a double bill, but like literally played at the same time. Yeah, and I really like the um, like corporeality of like physical special effects um, is something that like makes this movie really special is just like straight up this dude went to like the butcher shop and like got a bunch of like miscellaneous like parts of pigs and then proceeded to like crush them <laughs> crush them against the bodies of his actors. Like, it's just like very, um, it's very warm, you know? It's very warm, very sort of like cuddly. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the comforting corporeality, honestly, is what makes Burning Moon such a like, such a cozy movie. Like, watch it with your mama, gear it up at Christmas time. Oh. How does Donatella wear four perfumes? Like, I mean, I am a, I like perfume, but I'm like, I put on one perfume and that's all I smell for like four days. Like how, like what, also what perfumes is Donatella layering is what I wanna know. It's like the, uh, yeah, like the like 72 questions with Vogue or whatever. It's so unsatisfying, I don't know. It's like the answers to these questions are just like tweets. Like this isn't what I watch interviews for. <laughs> like when Donatella Versace, Versace, excuse me, tells me she wears four perfumes all layered. I want to know which fucking perfumes. Like, oh, f I mean, Donatella loves leather. Do you think she wears Bandit? Honestly, I've been thinking of layering Bandit. Um, I've been thinking of layering Bandit and Jazz Club. But they're both expensive and I don't want to like waste it, you know? I have been learning Bandit with 4711 and it's been going surprisingly well. Um, like the Bandit brings out the 4711 in a way that like you really wouldn't anticipate. Like it like, the Bandit almost seems to like pump up the 4711 and like make it longer lasting and less wispy, which is crazy. Like, man, perfume is crazy. Perfume is the least representational art, I feel. It's like, yeah, perfumes can be made to like smell like other stuff, but it's like, do they really? Like, does synthetic sandalwood smell like real sandalwood? Like, not, not really. Wow. Oh, you know what? The most special moment of Burning Moon, and I want to end the video talking about this. Um, the mom, like, listens to trance music. She's doing some like mom type task in the kitchen and she just has like trance music playing on the radio. And again, I don't know if this is just like, like faulty writing kind of, or like what, or if like 
you know, 50 year old moms in Germany in the 1990s like did listen to trance and this was just sort of like a normal thing. But yeah, like the mom is just like listening to trance radio and the um, announcer is like even like, like they even go out of their way to have like an announcer on the radio that says, trance how special, here it is. Like, so weird, but it's like bump, also the track is bumping. Like if that track, if I ever get to like go to a fucking like nightclub again and like a track like that comes on, like I will be ecstatic. Oh, oh.